Hello, I'm David Snowpack from Snowpack Games, and this is part one in a video course about using the Git version control system with a game project using the Godot game engine. So, who is this course for? Um, everyone using Godot, and I really honestly believe that. So, personally, I am a professional developer, and I use version control every day. And version control and the tools for version control were clearly designed for developers, but I really believe that version control is not just for developers, that it would be invaluable to artists, level designers, animators, really everyone, everyone who is making a, a game in the Godot game engine. So let's try and demystify that. That's my goal for this course. Uh, we're gonna start at the absolute beginner level. So if you've never used version control before, never used Git before, I think you'll be able to jump in and and get it and, and keep moving up to some really advanced stuff so that even if you're um, an advanced user, maybe a developer, maybe someone who's used Git f before, but maybe not with a, a Godot game project, there's some really cool advanced stuff we get to in the end, and I really believe that you can start from nothing at the beginning and work your way through. If you're more advanced, I also believe there's some cool stuff in here for you. You may just want to skip some of the first couple of uh, episodes in the series. So what will we be covering in this course? We'll be covering a ton of stuff, starting from, like I said, absolute beginner stuff, like why use Git or any version control system with Godot, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and then we're gonna move to step-by-step -step instructions on how to use Git, that's in the next episode. So, you know, if you wanna skip some of this high-level stuff and just get right down to actually using Git, you can skip to the next episode, I won't mind. Uh, then we'll be pushing uh, your repository to gitlab.com and learning about some of the features of GitLab. And then uh, we will be using GitLab CI to automatically build your project on each commit. And this is super exciting stuff. I'm really looking forward to getting to that part so that you can you know, make a, a commit to your uh, game project, push it to GitLab, and then have GitLab CI like automatically build the Windows, Linux, Mac, web, Android, whatever versions, and then push those someplace, like push them to your itch.io page or your Steam page or send them to your QA team. Or It's really, really cool stuff. So definitely hang, hang in there for at least that part. Um, we're going to talk about branching and merging in the context of a Godot game project, uh, as well as handling a large amount of assets in Git. Uh, some games don't have that many assets, like 2D games don't, don't end up with that much uh, in the way of assets, maybe megabytes, but there's other games that have like gigabytes worth of game assets, and handling those can be a little bit tricky in Git, so we're going to have a, a part that addresses that, as well as much, much more. <laughs> so starting from some beginner stuff, working through to some advanced stuff, don't be afraid to uh, skip some of the beginner stuff if you're a little more advanced, uh, but yeah, let's get started. So what is a version control system? So at the highest level, uh, it's a tool that allows you to store revisions of a set of files. Uh, in this case, those files will be you know, your scenes, your GDScript files, your assets. And it allows you to make some changes to those files. For example, adding some notes to a scene, changing a few lines of code in a GDScript file and then you commit those changes to your repository. So you make a bunch of uh, changes and then you initiate a commit command, which takes all of those changes, bundles them up, and then pushes them to your repository. And your repository is basically like this sort of separate storage where the revision control system keeps uh, all of these changes outside of, well, not really outside of, but separate from like the actual files themselves. Uh, you can give a description for those changes when you make the commit. So for example, let's say you added a health bar, so you'd you know, type the description for that commit, added a health bar. Then you can push the local copy of your repository to some third party location. Uh, for example, gitlab.com that we're gonna be talking about in this series. There's also GitHub and Bitbucket and a whole bunch of other services like that. Um, and then also allows you to pull changes from the other members of your team who may have pushed those changes to GitLab down to your local copy of your repository so then you can integrate them into your version of the game. That's a really, really high level. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to kind of illustrate that a little bit more with some of these uh, diagrams. So 
uh, a repository is made up of a set of revisions uh, in Git and other version control systems. Uh, they're frequently referred to as commits. So let's say in revision number one, you added your player character, then you, you know, changed some scenes, changed some GDScript files, added the health bar, so then you made another commit, that's revision number two, add a health bar, and then revision number three, let's say you added the enemy sprite. What makes a revision control system really useful is that you can go back to any of these revisions at any time, either temporarily, just to go see like, oh, what did the game look like at this earlier revision? Or uh, to completely like revert a revision, say, ah, oh, you know, what I was doing there just didn't make any sense. Let's completely revert that revision and move back to a previous one. It also allows you to see the differences between two revisions. You can uh, ask it to show you, you know, what lines were changed in your GD script file between this revision and that revision. Uh, revisions also exist in branches that can merge. So the idea of branching and merging is kind of advanced. We're going to be digging really deep into it uh, in a later part in the series. But just at a super high level, let's say you have a stable branch, which is the version of your game that's been released to players. It's what people are actually playing. And let's say the current revision on that branch is revision 234 with some boring stable change on it, whatever. Now you want to start working on some cool new feature that's going to take you a while to get done. So rather than working on that right in the stable branch, you can make a separate feature branch just for that new feature that you're trying to add. And you start working on it, get kind of far, uh, but not all the way done. So you commit that set of changes. You know, you started working on that cool new feature. Then let's say your players find this really critical bug that needs to be fixed. Like it's super serious, it's breaking the game for 10% of your players or something, I don't know. So you really need to fix it. So then you can make that critical bug fix over in your stable branch and push that out to players. Now imagine you didn't have version control or if you had you know, started working on this in your stable branch rather than a feature branch, how would you, you know, get this critical bug fix to your players if you had already started working on this feature, right? You'd have to like either push this half broken feature out to your users along with the critical bug fix, or you'd have to go in there and try to like turn it off or hide it or something. But with version control, you can just have this cool new feature off in a separate branch. So if any critical fixes come up, you know, you can do that in your stable branch. And then later you can come back to your feature branch make another commit that finishes up this cool new feature, and then you're able to merge that back into the stable branch. So branches and merging are a super powerful uh, tool in version control systems that we'll be talking about a lot more later. So hopefully you're starting to see some of the power, some of the value in what a version control system can do, uh, but let me give you a couple more specific uh, use cases. So. Uh, one of the main reasons to use version control is to collaborate with other people. Uh, there have definitely been games made f by teams without version control systems where they're just like mailing files back and forth or like putting them in Dropbox or something. But it's way easier to merge your changes with the changes of your teammates using a version control system than just copying files around. It's much less likely to lead to you losing work or, you know, having crazy situations to untangle. It also allows you to work in your own branches with your teammates without disrupting each other. So you can work in your branch, your teammate can work in this branch, and then when those changes are ready, then you can merge them together. Uh, it helps with tracking down bugs and regressions. So uh, if a bug appears at some point in the game that didn't used to exist, you can keep rolling back different revisions and try and find, you know, where was that bug introduced to help you uh, track down what exactly it was. There's actually a tool in Git, Git Bisect that helps automate some of that process so that you don't have to go through quite as many revisions if you're going to try to go through like every single one. Um, yeah. Backup. So you have to back up your project anyway, right? Like there's no way that you're gonna work on a game project for a long period of time without a backup. Well, because you're pushing your uh, Git repository to some you know, third party location like GitLab, it basically is a backup, but it's a backup on steroids because it's a backup with all of your uh, you know, changes over time as well. It allows you to maintain the separate, you know, stable and beta branches, which is something you're going to want to do. As soon as you release your game, 
uh, even if it's just like an early release, like to uh, you know trusted people to test it or whatever, you're gonna want to have like a separate branch or tag or something identifying that, so that you can keep working on your game after you've shown it to people. Or with your QA team, you're gonna need to kind of have a stable like this is what I sent to the QA team while you know the the game development team has kept working on uh, the game after that. Um, and Godot version updates. So. When you update to a newer version of Godot, sometimes uh, that new version of Godot will need to make changes to your project to update it for like whatever changes there have been to Godot. And sometimes that new version of Godot that you updated to isn't going to work out for some reason, especially if you're like trying out a beta version or something because it has something that you need for your project. It's like, oh, I'll go grab the Godot 3.2.2 beta 4 or whatever. And um, you'll you'll start that up on your project, it'll change a bunch of your files, and like, oh, this actually won't work because there's some other bug in it, and then you try to go back to a stable version of Godot, and now it won't work <laughs> with your, with your uh, uh, changed files, the way your files got changed by the update. So having version control definitely helps with uh, jumping around to different Godot versions, which I don't know about you, but I tend to, to do that a bunch to try out the features as they're coming out. Uh, yeah, so I would really advocate that you always use version control for every single game. Like even if you're just playing around or whatever, I think you should always use version control even if you're a solo game developer. Like all of these things that we talked about over here, like these are useful to you even if you aren't collaborating with other people. Like tracking down bugs, having a backup, having separate branches, good old version updates, like that's always useful. I just I don't see why anyone wouldn't want that. But wait, <laughs> there's lots of version control systems, right? There's not just the Git version control system, uh, which is true. There are lots. For example, Subversion, Bizarre, Mercurial, etc., etc., etc. And there's loads of differences between them. They all effectively accomplish the same thing at a high level, but at like a day-to-day -day use level, they're actually quite different. Um, and people have different preferences, like personally, I actually prefer the bizarre version control system to Git, but that's just my personal preference. At the end of the day, none is really objectively the best choice. They're all just different, some pros and cons, but I think any of them can get the job done. So why use Git? Why are we talking about Git specifically today? Um, so Git is open source. If you use Godot, you probably value open source in some way since Godot is also open source. Um, Godot is currently the most popular version control system, which means that anyone you collaborate with is more likely to know Git than to know any of the others. Uh, and it also means there's lots and lots of tutorials and documentation out there. So if you are having trouble and you need some help, you're more likely to be able to find resources for Git than for any of the others. And Git is also what is used by the main Godot engine project. So if one day you ever want to uh, you know, contribute a change to the main Godot engine, the way that you're going to contribute that back to the Godot project is through Git. So why not learn Git? Oh, and also <laughs> we get to use GitLab and GitLab CI, which are really, really cool tools. Um, and actually, like just in general, there's way more cool third-party tools for Git than for the other version control systems. Um, we won't be talking about uh, all of them, obviously, just uh, a handful of them, but that's another compelling reason to, to stick with, with Git. Is that really all there is for this part? Wow, that part went fast. So in the next part, we're actually going to be sitting down with Git and start using it. I'm going to be giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your repository, how to uh, make some small setting changes to uh, make it work better with a Godot game engine project. And we'll really be getting down to it. So see you in that part. Bye-bye.